what's up what's up guys welcome back to another podcast episode i'm your host danny g and today we got a good friend of mine um a friend i've known since we were in high school he's he's doing some good and awesome things right now he just started his own business and he's here to talk about it today he is selling steaks and doing his thing really um he he gave me a sample let's just let's just start off with that he gave me a sample to try it and i gotta admit it was one of the best steaks i've ever had hands down please welcome my host today ivan rosas from fire the table hey guys what's up hey danny what's up man how you doing good good yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so okay Let, let's start this off so it doesn't get too awkward real quick <laughs> <laughs> Um, you, I've known you since what, since high school, probably freshman year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you ever go to Lamar junior high? Yeah, I, I went, yeah. I, I, I was really new when, when I went to the junior high. Oh, so didn't you move from somewhere? California. Yeah. California. There you go. I was yeah. like, I, I want to say California, but I didn't want to be wrong. <laughs> yeah, man. I moved, I moved here in 2008 from California. Been here ever wow. since. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, man. So shit, 2008 till now, that's, that's a good minute. Have you been <laughs> back? Yeah. Uh, uh, to California? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I try to visit as much as I can. Lately, I haven't gone in like maybe two, three years. Okay. That's just because I've been super busy trying to get a bunch of stuff started off here. Yeah. But yeah, um, enough about me. Let's talk about you, man. What have you been up to since the last time I talked to you, which was probably graduation? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Oh, like, my gosh. Uh, you know, it's it's been such a trip. And I'm not, I don't mean it in a bad way. It's just, man. Like, you ever wonder, like, when you left Lamar and you're like, man, what, what am I going to do now, you know? Yeah. I'm sure every one of us was thinking that. And, um, you know, ever since graduation, I just followed the uh, the traditional route. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, actually, in fact, um, I, I graduated. We all graduated. I remember, like, what, the first week of June or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, literally the next weekend, I attended my first – college class oh really? i was already yeah yeah so at san jacinto in pasadena um i you know i just i went ahead and started i got my basics out of the way mm-hmm. and uh at that time you know you know how we did auto tech in high school yeah, yeah. uh i was trying to be a technician and sure, um, yeah. I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to pursue that uh ford program uh-huh. and uh at that time it was me and hector as well going to school together we would um you know just yeah, drive to, over the- i used to ride with them the, the, oh really yeah so i went to san jack for like three weeks and then i dropped out <laughs> oh wow but, but those three weeks i would ride up there with him yeah we yeah pull together yeah you know um so i i did that for two years um actually i you know yeah I did my auto tech for like maybe a year and then I just decided, man, this is not for me. So mm-hmm. then I changed, uh, I actually did not change. Um, what do you say? Major. I just basically finished my basics, you know, okay. your math, your history, whatever. So that way, uh, cause I already had, I, I guess I developed the plan to transfer to university of Houston. And, um, after two years I transferred over, and um, it was crazy, man, I, dude, almost every person who goes to school is going to change their major like, yeah. like five, six times. And that's, that was my story. Oh, was it? I was, uh, yeah, yeah. So I went from auto tech to uh, psychologist to engineer. And I think I landed finally on just business. Yeah. Damn, you were and all over so the place, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I, you know if I could tell like the younger generation, I would just tell them, make sure you try your best to know what you want to do because um, some of those credits you get do not transfer over to your degree, which means more money spent. So yeah, I spent a lot of money. (laughs) Yeah. That's right, man. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I would have probably been in the same boat if I would have actually gone 
<laughs> yeah. I, I ended up dropping out. I was like, man, I'm making money. I'm good. But, yeah. You know, it, so, it is what it is. I, I ended up still being, I'm still a tech. I'm a, <laughs> a diesel tech, but for construction equipment now. And that's pretty cool room. though. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, you never know what you're gonna end up with. Um, so after our I, I you know, after I finished school, uh I actually the last half of my school at University of Houston, I was blessed. I got um a pretty good job and uh once I finished school, I got like a instant promotion, uh, which was pretty good. And that actually prompted me to just go ahead and save money and go ahead and start uh, getting that engagement ring because at the time mm-hmm. I was already maybe four or five years dating with my wife now. Um, so then I proposed after I graduated or actually, yeah, uh, during the party, it was pretty mm-hmm. cool. Um, so then dude finished school, got engaged, got married. Um, we moved out, yeah. you know, it's uh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Um, How'd y'all like, how'd y'all meet? Cause you're saying y'all y'all started dating in 2013. That was literally a year after we graduated in high school. Yeah. Uh so we we met at church. Oh, okay. She was uh she was uh, a part of the choir and uh-huh. I I was a sacristan. I was like the guy that was there very first thing in the morning to open the doors for everyone and yeah. I was the last one out. So uh okay. it's pretty funny. I just I was like, man, that girl's cute. <laughs> dude that's funny because uh my girlfriend actually met her at church too but i i met her in shit when was it i met her when i first moved down here that was like one of the first people i met oh, wow. and uh throughout high school i asked her out like three four times and she rejected me every time dude. <laughs> <laughs> damn and uh it, it's so crazy you know uh during high school we were like best friends we were super close and then we kind of like fell off right after we graduated we went our own ways and somehow full circle uh two years ago we we got back together so it's been Dude, that's cool. awesome yeah 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 man yeah it's it's crazy how life works out man I, and it trips me out yeah and i guess like after uh you know Dude, it's so funny. And I know I'm just like, I'm just 26. Um, I'll be 27 next June. But um, I know like there's a certain age you get, like maybe in your mid thirties or maybe forties, they call it a midlife crisis. Yeah. I think I had that a little early. Uh, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like, dude, I'm, I'm blessed. Like, I can't complain. But, uh, you know, I just, I just started saying like, man, like I want to do something different, you know? Yeah. And like, like you, man, like, um, I've been, you know, I've been, I watch everybody through social media every now and then, you know, we're all busy, mm-hmm. but you know, like you, I, I was like, man, you know what, let me just, let me just start doing this thing, uh, with fire to table, you know, yeah. but it wasn't like an instant kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, it, 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 it's a weird process, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I, like with the whole podcasting thing, like I kicked it around with two of my friends for three years. <laughs> I was kicking it around. I was like, come on guys, let, let's do a podcast or let's do YouTube. Let's do something. Cause I mean, we we're a bunch of idiots. We used to always go get drunk and go to brewery hopping and stuff. <laughs> That's actually how this podcast started. We used to always go brewery hopping. We would meet the owners. We would, cause we would always bullshit with everybody. We're, we're social drunks. And, um, <laughs> You know, I, I just, I, I was like, man, I'm bored with what I'm doing. I enjoy doing this part of life where I'm out and about talking to people. And, um, and yeah, like, it, I just kept kicking it around, kicking it around. And finally, one of my friends, he was like, all right, dude, let's do it. And we started it. He helped me start it all up. We, we built it up, built it up. And, um, you know, he's like, man, and recently he was like, man, it, it's time for me to go another avenue. I want to go back to school. I want to concentrate on that. And I was like, all right, cool, man. Like, do you do you? Uh, I always appreciate that you helped me do this. And you always got a seat here. But, you know, I'm going to keep pushing this on. And now that we've built a a following, we kind of build up a, you know, we just build around it and built people and uh, build a bunch of connections. I was like, man, let let me turn the page on this podcast. And let me start bringing my friends that I see are, are doing stuff. Cause like you said, you know, you're always watching social media. You see the people we graduated with, you see some of our close friends, 
you're like, damn, everyone's doing their own thing. And when I saw that, I was like, well, I got a podcast already. I got a follow. <laughs> I got a social media following. I was like, let me get people that I know that I find interesting and that they're doing their own thing. And they're being creative. Let me get them on here and let's, let's you know, chop it up. Let's, let, let's promote one another. Let's put on for everybody. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So like when I, when I saw you doing this, like, cause well, yeah, when I saw you doing this, I was like, man, like that's really dope. He's he's taking his own his own avenue, creating his own thing. And uh and that's when I that's when we kind of all started hitting each other up, right? Cuz you tagged me on Facebook and I was already talking to some other friends about bringing them on here. Yeah. And then you you released your your social media cuz I I remember watching you um cooking steaks on, on your Facebook and your Instagram. <laughs> I was like, damn, this this dude's really into like you know, cooking and grilling. I was like, I wonder what he's gonna do with it. And then he came yeah. on fire at the table, and I was like, oh shit, that's what he was doing. He was prepping himself. Yeah, you know, it's it's like um, like I don't think I would be the type of person that would just step out and and you know do this, you know, because it's definitely a risk, you know, and and there's mm-hmm. definitely that uncertainty with it, you know. Um, and it's all about what you want to do. Like, what kind of goals do you have with it? And do like, I had millions of questions on like, what if, what if, what if, and I think at one point I just, over time, I just said, you know what, let me just do it, <laughs> you know, and I'll yeah. learn everything on the way, you know, with everything that, that comes with it. Um, so, you know, it was funny cause my wife, you know, she's a better, she's way better at social media and, you know, she's way better yeah. at those kinds of things. And I was asking her like, okay, so if I create this, you know, what, like, do I make a separate page or this and that? And what kind of logo, what kind of, oh, dude, it was, it was just, you know, but you know, all of that is is exciting, you know, because I guess it motivates you. And if you're really going to stick to it, like it's, it's your own, you know, and Mm -hmm. you just go on and run with it, you know? So, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy that, um, I've started this and it's not just me running this. It's also my wife. Okay. And yeah. Dude, so that's dope. Um, so let me get to one of the first questions I, I had written down. Um, when, when you're doing all this, like what, what, first off, what got you into grilling? Like, um, how so did that passion grow or come to be? Dude, I mean, I, th- I, I want to pin it back to going to those, carne asadas with my family you know okay. like my my uncles would always have the grill wide open fires mm-hmm. all up and they would just grill fajitas and all that and my uh my aunts and mom would do the rice and stuff like that and you know mm-hmm. traditional stuff like mm-hmm. that and um I don't know like I've always watched like we've always I, I guess I've always hung out with them as they were cooking and just watching them you know kind of listening to their tips and stuff like that um can you imagine the mexican music in the background oh, yeah. yeah buddy <laughs> so um <laughs> yeah you know so i guess i i just had a small it's like a, a snowball effect that just started to grow on me you know i'm like wow like you know this this looks pretty cool you know yeah yeah i feel you on that one it, it, it's crazy because uh in hispanic culture you know food's the biggest thing food oh dude yeah together and I mean that's dope that that that's kind of what started it and then um yeah like it, it starts your passion it makes you interested in different things right like for me when I was younger and it was that I was always interested in what people were drinking <laughs> like what beer they were drinking and stuff like that and it's weird because as I grew up and I got to the age where I could drink and stuff like yeah. that's all I wanted to know I was like I want to learn about beer so, yeah. I, you know, I started taking classes on how to pair beer, how to pair wine, like what alcohol wow. with what. And then, you know, I started brewery hopping, which became like this huge passion for me, just like going to different breweries, getting to know the people that run them, kind of yeah. seeing how, how their mind works to come up with these delicious beers. And, um, you know, it, it, it's funny because when I, like I said, when I, when this started, it was all just a passion project. It was all yeah. just for fun, just an excuse for me and Dan, my friend, to go places and get drunk and just BS with people. And with that, you know, the passion grew and we actually got sponsored by a brewery last year, which wow. was super dope. Yeah. 
That's yeah. awesome. I think I saw you post that at that time. I'm like, damn, dude. Yeah, we. it's funny, dude, because, like, we got on this huge wave right off the bat. Like, people started following us, and numbers started growing, and we we all of a sudden, we went to a brewery, and they're like, hey, we like you guys. You guys are funny. We want to sponsor wow. you. And we're That's like, awesome. And they're, they're like, yeah, you know, so we got a Southern Star sponsorship, and then it's been dope ever since because they give us free beer. They let us promote for them and, and fun stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, dude, and I don't know, like, um, so funny story to, to add to that. Um, you know, when I met Jen, um, it took us about a year for us to finally, like, date. <laughs> it was a whole, it was a whole mess. But uh, <laughs> anyways, it's like your usual love story. But uh-huh. um so when I f- f- started finally dating Jen, um, you know, I got to meet her parents and I started mm-hmm. coming over on the weekends and, you know, spend time with them as well. And uh, one day, um, and this was like maybe fast forward two years in our relationship, you know, I started growing on them and stuff like that. And the dad, and at this point, I still have not yet grilled myself. Like really? I haven't, yeah, I have not touched the grill at all and this was maybe like 2014 2015 mm-hmm. and um so the dad the, the dad my father-in-law just said hey uh you know why don't you just hey why don't you just make us some stuff you know mm-hmm. i'm like i was nervous dude because i mean it sounds funny dude but i'm like i don't even know how to turn the charcoal on you know oh really <laughs> it was, so you were yeah dude green when it came to the grill yeah i was super green <laughs> even though i've seen my uncles do it all the time it's just mm-hmm. there's a different aspect to it when you start actually doing it yeah. um and that's yeah so um yeah you know it, it all started like that you know he just because he was the cook you know he was the, the grill person every weekend oh um, dang no pressure yeah yes either. <laughs> I know, dude. And on top of that, like her family's huge and like they all have this like like just so, some sort of unity and like, you mm-hmm. know, if you mess with one, you mess with all, you know. It's like Damn, okay. Anyway, yeah, Talk so the pressure group. was on. And, <laughs> yeah, so um I just started grilling, man, and I don't know, it, it just grew on me, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's dope, man. So with grilling, I mean, everyone finds their their thing, right? Like, what kind of meat they like to grill, how they like to do it, their prep work. Um, what was kind of like the process for you figuring out what you like and what you like to cook? Um, well, definitely, it at that time it was like what was easiest and what was the most delicious, you know. Uh-huh. Um, at that point, you know, I wouldn't even consider trying to do any kind of brisket or you know, ribs, because that's, that's more tedious, more, it takes more time. There's just so much more conditions with it. Um, So at first I started doing simple things like fajitas, uh, burgers and chicken, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and kind of seeing like how long it takes for it to cook, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, it's so yeah, man, it, it just uh, slowly, but surely I started doing other things. And then, Mm I guess the more you do it, the more you get accustomed to the, the fire. Cause mm-hmm. I, I think the fire is like one of the most important things to, to know about, you know, yeah. uh, how to maintain it, how to have proper fire. Yeah. I, I saw that you use a, like one of those fire starter can things. Is that what it's yeah. called? Fire starter, right? Yeah. You put your charcoal uh, in and then you light yeah, yeah. it. Charcoal chimney. There we go. That's what it's called. <laughs> So yeah. how'd, you, how'd you figure that one out? Did you just try yeah. different things and you're like, okay, this, this works for me or. So uh, I didn't really. Did, so my, my uncles, they were all limited to just fajitas. I'm like, okay, well that doesn't cut it for me. I want to grow. I want to do more things. And uh-huh. they all, they all start their fire with lighter fluid. And at the time it, it when you start with it, it's easy because all you got to do is just spray it on there. Mm-hmm. But um, then I started looking at, okay, I want like a cleaner, cleaner fire. So I started looking at YouTube for guidance and I looked at all these videos and how you do these certain things. And, uh, just, you know, then I started doing that and practicing, practicing. And Uh finally, man, like I finally got like a little rhythm going. Okay. that's what's up. 
That's what's up. Um, YouTube's awesome, dude. <laughs> oh, for sure. YouTube is for sure. awesome. It, it taught With- me how, how to set up everything on my <laughs> podcast. I didn't know anything. Like I had yeah. before and you know, I was like, okay, this is gonna be the same thing. Nope. The way you set up mics, the way you set up mixers is completely different. Yeah. yeah. And that's all that's always like, you know, you can always look at other people do it, you know, but uh it's all it's all about practice too. You know, you gotta find out what what works for you and your application. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely um as long as you're, you know, wanting to learn how to do things. Yeah, it takes a little bit of passion, don't you think? Like it oh, does. Like kind of it, it helps you. I, I guess it helps you maintain persistency because mm-hmm. um, you know, if, if it just aggravates you over time, you're not gonna want to do it anymore. But yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what that's what helped me to realize, okay, this is something that I actually like doing, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, it, and it, it, oh go ahead, go ahead. Oh uh, it's, it's so and with that, you know, it's not just like, like, don't get me wrong, food, obviously my passion too, but mm-hmm. uh, something I also like is, you know, when you actually get the hang of it and when you start delivering good food, yeah, it makes everyone happy. And that's also another part that's like the rewarding part, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I bet that's uh, super awesome when, when, when you go take something and everyone's like, oh, dang, like, yeah yeah everyone yeah. like dude it's so funny because everyone uh in jen's family my family my friends are all like oh dude you know let's go to ivan's you know or mm-hmm. um yeah the weekend you know that he's cooking or it's it's just funny because it's like they all like they still to this day uh ask me like is it okay you know if you cook i'm like don't even ask i know it's okay <laughs> you know <laughs> so it's like uh, are you the the chef now in the family or the the grill master so to say? yeah yeah <laughs> you know um it's funny because like they'll be like we went to a store and we bought this this and that and we we're hoping you know you could make it and i'm like okay mm-hmm. cool <laughs> that's dope man <laughs> that's yeah. really dope um do you remember like the first steak you made that came out like exactly how you wanted it Yes. Um, I'll, and I was very surprised. Um, it's actually the picanha, which is what I, mm-hmm. what I sampled you. Yeah, dude, that steak was amazing. <laughs> like, uh, I love steak. I, my, my favorite thing is going out and eating a good steak, but that steak you gave me, dude, it was perfectly cooked. Yeah. Perfectly cooked. Like even after reheating it, it was just perfect. Yeah. And, and I like, that's something, that's another thing too, that I'm trying to like, uh, you know, get better at is how can I conserve the, the heat of Mm -hmm. the steak, you know, once it comes off the grill and how much time do I have until it starts, you know, cooling down more, but pretty much, uh, yeah, you know, the picanha is where it all started, I guess. Yeah. And and what made you choose the picanha? So I have never heard of this kind of cut, you know, uh slowly but surely i started to know about the ribeyes new york Mm -hmm. strips filet mignons all that stuff um but i i followed these this guy on youtube and shout out to google foods and suvi everything if anyone knows them uh uh but anyway he's brazilian and Mm -hmm. he loves picanha like he would make some videos ever since he started his channel like about several years ago uh, he first started doing like picanha, the stuff that he loves to make. And I'm like, picanha, like, what is that? Um, and it actually is, um, it's like, an, well, it, it all started in Argentina, uh, where it all got famous. It's just this cut that's right above the, it's like the rump cap. Um, okay, okay. It's got a, it's got a fat cap, but it's like a top sirloin. So it's very tender. Although, yeah. Um, even though it's got a lot of fat, that fat is not hard. It's actually a soft fat. So mm-hmm. it's even better than the fat off of, of a ribeye. <laughs> is that, that's what keeps it juicy, right? Yes. I noticed it was super tender, super juicy. And yeah. uh, like I took it home, right? Well, I, I took it to my girlfriend's house because I, I was heading that way. And literally I popped the package open and I was like, oh shit, it smells amazing. <laughs> Instantly she smelled it and then her little brother smelled it and they both came running into the kitchen. They're like, oh, yeah. what do you got? And I was <laughs> like, well, well, my buddy, you know, he is starting his business and he gave me this to sample. I was like, y'all want to try it? 
next thing I know, everyone, everyone in her house was there. They, they got like eight people there and everyone was there. And then we were just like slicing it up and everyone tried it. Everybody, everybody loved it. Everybody, oh, dude, that's awesome. Youngest, the youngest, pickiest eater. He saw it and he's like, ooh, that looks good. And he's like, can I try it? And he smelled it and he looked at it and then he ate it. And he's like, ooh, I want more. And I think he ended up fighting with someone for the last piece. <laughs> So uh, that's you, awesome. got, you got an amazing product, man. Yeah. Um, besides picanha, do you do any other steaks or are you yeah, yeah. On moving up to other things or is it right now just picanha? Yeah. So, you know, um, right now with my menu, uh, it's, it's small and it's actually small on purpose because I didn't want to start with a huge menu and that's the uh, start. Don't yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Dude, I would like, I would be all over the place, you know, but, uh, yeah, dude, I, I do, uh, sirloins, which is, okay. um, I would say an affordable cut. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I do New York strips, ribeyes, tenderloins and, uh, picanha. And I, I've also, I'm going to expand to do like tri tip, which is, uh, okay. you know, kind of yeah. like, kind of like picanha, but it's, um, uh, a little, it's a little more like the, uh, the fajita texture Mm -hmm. um and then of course like uh soon i will start to do ribs brisket i I saw that on your instagram man i was like damn this guy's (laughs) really stepping it up yeah yeah so like and i've already had plenty of practice of doing Mm -hmm. all this you know at the hangouts that we do here at the family um so then you know, I just want to, like, before I roll it out, I just want to make sure that I have everything down. Like, because one, one thing is to, to just do some backyard barbecue, backyard yeah. grilling, you know, but the another thing is to actually make sure you deliver a good product. And that's yeah. what I want to make sure. Do so, you, uh, I, oh, I was gonna say, do you, do you think you take a little bit extra pride since your name's behind this and it's, it's your, your, definitely. Business, your passion? Definitely because, you know, every barbecuer, every grill master, every chef, every whoever has their own touch. Yeah. And, you know, your ribs are going to be different from my ribs. It's not to say that, you know, I wouldn't say it's the superior kind of ribs, but mm-hmm. um, it's just like, oh, man, like this ribs from this person is just like, oh, you know, die to yeah. die for. Like with Picanha, it's like, man, this dude's Picanha is really good. Oh so, yeah, uh, dude. for sure, for sure. Like on, on my uh, my little book where I have you know all, all my favorite barbecues and stuff. You're you're there, picanha steaks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and of course, like, um, so like I, I think I'm gonna do like seasonal kind of things. Like, I'll I'll probably remove most of the items from my menu for just a for just a, a time period. Mm-hmm. And introduce a time period, a new time period. Well, I where I will say, okay, I'm going to offer brisket, pork shoulder, okay. you know, stuff like that, because those things actually take like hours and hours to do, and I don't want to mix those things yet with like steak and chicken mm-hmm. stuff like that, because um, you know, I'm I'm basically starting slow, right? You know. Yeah. No, that, that's the best thing, man, because when I was in high school, I opened my own food truck, had my parents uh, operate it, but I, I did all the, the menu and stuff, Yeah. and I screwed up. I screwed up from the jump. I had a menu that was way too big to handle on a food truck. It took way too much effort, way too much time to get all the products and too much yeah. money. At the end of the day, you know, I, I ran the business down because I was spending all this money on all these different things. And not being able to sell everything because my menu was way too big. Yeah. So inventory definitely kills if you're not moving it fast enough. Yeah, you know, and that's why uh when I when I contact everyone or or whoever messages me, I tell them that you know everything's made per mm-hmm. order and I resource everything for your order specifically. So mm-hmm. Uh, that's why I asked for like at least two days in advance. The you know I could do one day in advance. Mm-hmm. It's just that you know I also have a full time schedule, so yeah. I have to make sure I set aside some time to go look for whatever it is you want mm-hmm. and prepare for it and all that. Because I actually have 
uh, for my steaks, um, and actually for any kind of meat, even brisket, brisket especially is more important to do this. Um, I salt my meat overnight. So yeah. okay. I don't just, yeah, I don't just do everything last minute. I actually take the time to do everything, yeah. you know? Yeah, no, that, that makes sense, dude. Um, I, I know personally that seasoning your meat ahead of time, three to three to four days before you actually cook, changes yeah. it completely. You know, it allows, yeah. it allows the meat to absorb the flavors, to absorb the salt, and the salt tenderizes it. So I, I completely understand there. <laughs> I was actually going to ask you that. Like, is there a grace period for from when you order to when you get it or things yeah. like that? So no, that's good yeah. to know. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I have accepted some orders where it was like the morning of and they wanted it like the lunchtime or something. And oh, um, I'll tell them, you know, OK, I'll work with you, you know, because they'll tell me, well, I, you know, I got to do something and I won't be really available to like next week or so. And I'm like, mm-hmm. OK. And so, you know, that's another, I guess, uh, advantage that someone would have, you know would you be willing to make some room, you know, would you be willing to, to make it happen? And I'm all about customer service. So, you know, I'll, I'll do my best, you know, to, to serve you. So. Yeah. That's yeah. what's up, man. I, I know that gets difficult sometimes because like <laughs> yeah. I said, I, I do this podcasting thing and then I work a full-time job and on top of that. I do side work. So, yeah. You know, I'm all over the place. And then I also do like recording and stuff like video recording and stuff for other people so i'm always booked i'm always running around and i know sometimes it gets frustrating yeah or or it gets hard and not frustrating it gets hard to just like keep up with everything yeah everyone's like orders or wants yeah you know i'll i have to like or i guess i've developed uh some kind of system now where you know i take your order i write it down i put it in my phone and, you know, through iCloud, you know, I'm able to see it on my mm-hmm. iPad as well. So I'm able to, you know, keep everything in track. What do I need? You know, I'm not going to go to the store four or five different times, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm going to try and go to the store just once and come back and just get what I need and, mm-hmm. you know, make it. Um, so, yeah, there's there's definitely a lot of things that I'm learning um, still. But it's, I would say it's, it's like the I would say the best part of it, you know, you're, you're growing. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I bet. I, and I know how that feels, man. It's, it's an awesome feeling. Um, So you have these, these different cuts of meat, different kinds of steaks and you do sides as well. Right. Yeah. Like what, what options are there? Let's say I wanted to order today and I wanted to order a picanha with, you know, a side, what, what options do you have on your menu there? So I started with the things that we know right off the bat, because there, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of sides that I, we know how to do, but again, it's, it's about making sure we deliver a good quality product to you, mm-hmm. not just to our family. You know, we, we feed our family anything, you know, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so with the sides right now, uh, we're doing mashed potatoes. We're doing mm-hmm. baked potatoes, loaded, but, uh, you know, of course I can leave you yeah. the option of a regular one, but I'm actually giving you a loaded baked potato. Um, your greens, you know, such as broccoli, asparagus, mixed vegetables. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm also considering doing other stuff as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That, I was wondering, like, well, I was thinking, I was like, man, and he's doing all this. Like, how does he have the time? Because like you said, you, you have a full-time job. Do you, do you sell throughout the week or is it just weekends or? It, it's mostly weekends. Um, yeah. Some people, like in the very beginning of this, I, I did have maybe like maybe one or two orders like on Tuesday or Thursday. But for the most part, um, everyone's been ordering for Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Um, and that's okay by me. You know, I've, I've actually like, I guess after doing all this, I guess for a little over a month now, I would say that that's actually the best way to do it right now for me, because of course, yeah. you know, working a full-time schedule, there's just, it's just very, very hard. And it would yeah. stress me out so much if I, if I do like weekdays. So yeah, I bet. And, uh, you, you offer takeout, right? Like you, you go delivering it's, yeah um the option to pick it up from you too 
Well, I, I do tell, like, I do tell some of them, hey, you know, you're always more than welcome, which in, in mm-hmm. some instances, yes, uh, some people have came and picked it up. But um, I always tell them I also deliver, you know, just because I know the, the, like, how good it is to just have someone deliver your food, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. 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 That, that's, that's awesome. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you something. I had it in my head while you were talking. <laughs> and then I started, like, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, like, ahead. I Dude, I'm actually getting hungry a little bit <laughs> talking yeah, about all this. Food. I know, man. I know. I may, I, have, I may have to hit up Jack in the Box or something. <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I got home and I was like, crap, I got I to get dressed. I got to set everything up. But, so I skipped dinner. I, I think after this, I'm going I'm to definitely get <laughs> some food. Yeah. Um, oh, the other question I was going to ask you was, so besides grilling, do you, do you ever cook at home? Like, are you are you into cooking in the kitchen or is it just grilling for you? Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so I, I, I also love cooking other things in the kitchen. Um, you know, I, lo- I love fish. I love Mm -hmm. salmon. I love um, all kinds of uh, like, I'm trying to think red snapper, Mm -hmm. you know, tilapia, obviously. Uh Um, And I'll, you know, research new recipes of how to like cook it, you know, and um, I actually also do steaks on the, on the stove with the cast iron. Um, Yeah. With, with butter and rosemary. rosemary. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And um you know, so yeah, I always, I always like to do new things. Um, I always like to try new things and that's actually how I am getting used to like, how, how can we bring flavor to this type of dish, you know, and you just gotta like, you really do have to experiment a whole lot, you know, it's a lot of trial and error. Yeah. I I bet. I I know the kitchen is one of those things where it, or at least for me, like I love, I love it because as well, I grew up in a very Hispanic Mexican uh, household, and cooking is like a huge, huge thing, you know, from making tamales, then having everything yeah. over to the pozoles, the carne asadas, the tacos, you know. And I, I really got deep into, you know, wanting to learn how to cook. So my mom taught me you know, like a bunch of stuff. But every now and then, I like to dabble with different things and experiment. And sometimes they're great. Sometimes the dog won't even touch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I also have a uh, a blackstone flat top, mm-hmm. so it's oh, it's like yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. You can make mm-hmm. you know tacos. You can make tacos yeah. a bistec or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's also something that I'm you know trying to learn. You know, it, it, I just want to know how to cook different things at at on different cook different foods on different things. If that makes yeah. sense. Okay. Yeah, that, that that makes a lot of sense. Have you ever tried like cooking different like? wild game or stuff like that yeah um deer obviously um uh i i'm i want to i haven't done this yet i want to do like a whole uh pig not like a big one but like you know baby pig yeah yeah um and that's gonna come in time i i I actually want to get a Um, huge smoker you know and put it in there okay Okay. yeah yeah so that's what you're trying to do smoke a pig or yeah yeah um yeah i want to do that because i haven't done that and i want to and man i've had actually like whole pig like that before roasted dude it uh, yes oh my gosh yeah and i don't know there's just a lot of things i want to get (laughs) yeah that's like that's one thing i love about the mexican culture man is the different styles of cooking like sometimes you just dig a hole in the ground and you know throw a big old pot full of uh, barbacoa covered with the uh, plantain leaves. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, it's the best. Yeah, I actually, I um, what was it, three years ago, I went hog hunting. Mm. And uh, I think we I got like five hogs. They're about 80 pounds a piece. Wow. And uh, I, I watched a couple of YouTube videos, learned how to butcher a hog. I butchered wow. it. And uh, I made carnitas. I made pork belly. Damn. And uh, what else did I make? And I made cuadritos out of the hogs. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so Dude, that's... it was awesome, man. I bought a big old castle. It was, uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I bought it at a flea market, actually. I, I went with my mom one day, and she's like, okay, we're going to go find the castle. We went to probably four different flea markets. 
And yeah. finally, we found one at the right price. And I was like, I got to have this. And then right after that, I went hog hunting. Dang. It, it was dope, dude. Uh, I was surprised how good hog meat is when it's fresh. How does it compare with regular pork? It's just, it's a lot cleaner. You know, and mm. uh, after watching a bunch of YouTube videos, I learned that you can get the gaming taste out of it by mm. by uh, soaking it in buttermilk. So what I oh, did, okay. uh, I went hunting and that night when I got all the hogs, I came home, I washed them, cleaned them up, butchered them, and I threw them in a cooler full of ice and salt. And I just, I left the meat in there for a night and let it all marinate with the ice and salt and it actually tenderized it. And then the next day I, I put them in a Ziploc bags with buttermilk and yeah. I, and I uh, vacuum sealed it and froze it. And then the week, the weekend after is when I got the casa. So we just, we, we threw everything in that day and it, it came out amazing, man. Wow. It was really good. Yeah. yeah. Man, that, that, that's good. Uh, I also want to do like lamb, you know, Ooh, okay. stuff like that. Lamb so, chop? Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, well, I've actually done lamb legs, uh, but I, I didn't, I haven't done them on the grill. Mm -hmm. I've done them in the oven. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, just want to move towards that a little bit, try and experiment. Okay. And, um, besides grilling, like what's your favorite kind of food? Um, besides grilling my favorite food, um, you know, it's actually, I got to give it to seafood, but specifically, uh, well, any kind of fish, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, sushi. sushi, man. Yeah. Like if, if I could just like skip a day of grilling or cooking or something like that, I would, I definitely look forward to going to a really good sushi place. Yeah. You got any good spots to go to? Yeah. Local uh, here in Richmond, there's a place called Ninjas. Um Okay. That I remember. I remember. Uh, that's actually off of three fifty nine, off of mm -hmm. ninety. It's really? it's near near Pecan Grove, over there. Okay. Is it uh, or... uh, no, it's it's been there actually for quite a while now. Um, I remember when they first opened. Um, they're right there. Yeah, by Pecan Grove in that area. There's like a strip right there where there's a forty nine. Uh, no, not forty nine. Niner. Niners Grove. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. In that same strip. Okay. I love that place. Um, and uh, th there's obviously a couple of places in Houston mm -hmm. that I really like to go to. Um, but yeah, dude, just eating sushis. Yeah. And I'm not talking. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, 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 you know, I'm not talking about like um, your traditional, you know, cooked sushi or, mm -hmm. you know, those rolls or whatever. Don't get me wrong. I, I love those rolls as well, but I love eating sashimi and nigiri yeah. and all that stuff yeah, yeah that's that stuff's dope, awesome man. yeah i love it i actually love going to this place called keepers it's on highway six and i think it's highway six i can't remember the other street what is it what is it damn i can't remember how i think it's highway six and sweetwater or something like that oh okay it's called keepers it's next to uh, it has a heb across from it it's okay. actually really, really good. It, it's mm. one of the freshest places I've had. Like okay. Where, where you can taste that the fish is. It, it's, it was yeah. caught that day or the day before. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really good. I, I definitely recommend it. Yeah. I got to try it. Yeah, for sure. Um, Well, we're, we've been recording for quite a minute, man. I, I think we're at the part of the interview where I just ask you some rapid fire questions. You answer yeah. to the best of your abilities. All right. All right. All right. Number one is uh what's the first thing you do when you wake up? The first thing I do when I wake up, I go to the restroom. <laughs> <laughs> and then I go get a cup of coffee. Okay. That's what's up. <laughs> uh do you prefer hot or cold? I prefer cold. Cold? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh chocolate or vanilla? I prefer, oof, dude, that's a tough question there. Um, uh, chocolate. Chocolate? Damn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You seem more like a vanilla guy, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, favorite artist at the moment? Favorite artist, dude, I'm going to have to give it to um, Dokken. 
Stalking? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Classic that's exactly. rock. Yeah. 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 Damn. I I I didn't expect that to be honest. Yeah. I had to think about it. I was like docking, docking, docking. And then I thought about it. I was like, oh shit, that's what's up, man. <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> All right. Uh my final question for you is if you could cook for any celebrity uh chef or chef or anyone, who would you want to cook for? Man, I'm gonna have to go with Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. Because yeah, yeah, you know, we, we know um I don't know, like for me, it's all about personality. And you know, I think this dude just has a great personality, you know. I know he would be very, very critique and you uh-huh. know, all that stuff, but I don't care. Just just to cook for him would be nice. Yeah, dude, he he's by far my favorite chef. Like I yeah, find yeah. so entertaining and so interesting. <laughs> and uh I, I like how meticulous he is with things. Yeah. Like yeah. like he gets a lot of hate for being an asshole or for being real strict, <laughs> but when you actually pay attention to what he says, he's like He's so into what he does that it has to be perfect. Yeah, for sure. I find that super dope. All right, man. I, I really appreciate you uh, making some time to sit down and talk with me, man. Uh, it was awesome. It was lots of fun. Uh, yeah. Do you want to plug your, your Instagram and stuff to everybody? Yeah. Can find you? Yeah. You know, uh, on Instagram, you can just search fire to table. Uh, you could also search my my Instagram account, iRoses2, um, and you can also find my page that way. On Facebook, it's the same thing. You can search Fire to Table, or you can search my name, Ivan Roses, and you can also look at my my stuff through my account. So, Okay. Yeah. Sweet, man. Thank you again for uh, doing this with me. It was fun, and we'll, we'll definitely you. do it again, man. Yeah, man. And, you know, you'll have you'll have to reach out to me sometime or maybe, you know, just figure out when we can all hang out, you know. Oh, hell yeah, man. Uh, have you tried those micheladas that Fabian sells? The michelada, man? Ah, I didn't know he sells those. Yeah, dude. He, uh, Richard and Hector are always over there with them. What? And, uh, yeah, That's his crazy. Cousin makes it. His cousin makes it. And uh, I hit up his cousin recently, and he, me and him are trying to work something out where he's going to sponsor this podcast. And oh, I'm going wow. up with, uh, I'm going to try to hook him up with Southern Star. So, oh. so maybe one of these days we can get together and I'll get some beer. You know, I, Dude. I, you, you know, we'll buy some meat, grill it all up, and just hang out. Dude, I'd okay. be happy to, man. Yeah, I, I think that'd be dope to do a good old auto tech reunion. <laughs> yeah man just let me know dude let me know all right man yeah uh, i'm gonna I'm work this stuff out and hopefully hopefully I'll, I'll be able to get back with you in a couple of weeks about it yeah, um, yeah but for sure i'm gonna hit you up personally to to get some more steaks maybe a steak <laughs> dinner yeah dude um, this was awesome thank you again for giving us uh some time and yeah that, that's pretty much it that's the show all right thanks daniel all right thank you man all right All right. All right, man. Peace.